are the different approaches to training? Yeah. And what are the most common mistakes you've seen? Whoa, um, I'm assuming the guy that was asking this is talking about the ability to do the right thing at the right time, which is really important to be able to move about thought and do the right responses, right? There's three approaches to that, generally speaking. The first level is, no matter what martial art you do, it's like what I call a fixed drill, which means everything is predetermined. I do this, you do that. So maybe I'm working on a block and it's preset, right? You gotta punch me like this, and I'm gonna block like that, and I do it over and over and over and over again. And that is cooperative 100%. It's like the grunt work part of training, right? The advantage of that is, you get to kind of wire in set responses in your brain against a particular response, right? Through doing it over and over again, you condition your nervous system and eventually you can do it with thought. As soon as something happens, you do the right thing, right? The disadvantage is, it's kind of like the grunt work. Most people quit during that phase of development because it's so boring, right? And, but once you can get past that, that you put in mass repetition and do the right thing at the right time. Rather, you're working on different footwork, different punching, or different blocks or whatever. Once you can get through that, then it becomes a part of you. You don't have to think about it anymore. Then the next stage of development is semi-random drills. It's still cooperative, but now it's not predetermined. Maybe an example of that would be like, you see that in Capoeira, where they go back and forth? And, uh, or you see that in like uh, light sparring where they're kind of going slow and light and they're isolating something or maybe I'm just working against a jab and you're only working against head movement, right? So there's an isolated theme, but it's very flexible now. It's almost like a game. It's like a conversation that you go back and forth, right? In terms of Wing Chun, it could be like um, Chi Sao, for example, without full contact, without going too hard and just working on flow back and forth, right? Or in Kali, there's the Huba, there's the back and forth thing, or even counter for counter training. These are all examples of semi-random drills. And the advantage of that is it's really fun, right? And humans learn the fastest when they're playing. So the dropout rate is very, very low. People like to play, so it's, that's the advantage. The disadvantage is you can't really do that phase of development without first the grunt work, without first ingraining some techniques and responses in your body, right? So semi-random drills are very good, right? Then the next phase of development is 100% random, 100% non-cooperative. You're basically testing if your stuff works. Some of the examples of that would be full contact sparring or full contact scenario training, right? Or semi-contact at least. The disadvantage of that is that in that phase of development, most people quit because it's too scary, right? Um, one time there was a course where only instructors were allowed to try it. And even though there were instructors, there was about an 80% dropout rate, right? Because you're learning all this stuff, and then when you do it, it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. So people don't want to feel like that, right? That's a disadvantage. The advantage is it's a reality test, and it leads to realistic modification of what you're practicing. You can't really do non-cooperative training without the cooperative grunt work. In the three phases of development that I talked about, in my opinion, unless the person is exceptional, most average people need all three, right? Without the semi-random drills in the middle, to bridge the full random and the fixed drills is very hard to do. That's why the semi-random conversational drills are very important, right? In the same time, if you get stuck there and you don't test out what you're doing, you could end up misleading yourself and developing habits that never happens. Because the nature of a game is you start readjusting to each other to the point where you're practicing things that probably will never happen in real life, right? So all three phases of development is important. You must first do fixed drill, predetermined drills, cooperative drills to develop a habit, and then you do semi-random drills where you're playing and flowing back and forth, and now you can explore and you can examine different angles and timing, and you're keeping the conversation going, and then you must test it to end all conversations as quick as possible. So reality testing, right? So all three is important. Sometimes when people train a lot and they still can't pull off what they advocate, usually if you examine what happened, there's really nothing wrong with the style they practice. Usually it's because in the training process, they might have missed one of the three things. You need the whole layer so your nervous system can translate smoothly, right?